Once I started getting interested in jazz and jazz guitar, then it didn't take long until I heard some of the first chord solos, especially Wes Montgomery and shortly thereafter Joe Pass. And that was pretty mind-blowing coming from Pearl Jam and Steve Ray Vaughan. The concept of soloing with chords like that was completely new to me. And that seemed both unbelievably difficult and also the coolest thing that I'd ever seen or heard. So, of course, I had to figure this out. Besides being a great sound that you can use in your solos, then working on chord solos will actually teach you things that will help you level up other aspects of your playing as well. And it doesn't have to be that difficult. The number one mistake that I see students make when they start working on chord solos is not being practical and starting with harmonized scales that are technically just much more difficult to use require more theory and is in general just a lot more information. That's not the place to start. I didn't try to take that exact approach, but I also made a mess of it. You want to keep it practical and simple. If you're new to improvising and want to learn what you can play over a minor seven chord, then you don't start with a love supreme. And I'll give you a much more practical strategy in this video. In the beginning, I didn't really have a choice. I had a few CDs, but there were no transcriptions, so I was limited to whatever I could figure out by ear, which was a pretty steep limitation when it came to chord solos. I managed to figure out a few West things here and there, and the George Benson solo on the Porsche stick, which has a chord solo part as well, but this wasn't really getting me anywhere for two reasons. It was either too simple to help me create my own solos, or too difficult to play and therefore impossible to use. At that time, I was mostly listening to Wes, and when Wes plays chord solos, then he is really block harmonizing a lot. So he will in fact play different chord voicings under each melody note, which makes it quite demanding to play, and also requires you to have quite a few things figured out about chords and theory. But that changed once I started having lessons after having moved from Aarhus to Copenhagen. One of my teachers at the time, Morten Kargaard, gave me a photocopy of a chord solo from the Joe Pass chord solo book. Learning that solo was a lot of work, which quite a few of my students also can tell you. But while working on it, I started to see some things in the Joe Pass solos that were a lot easier to move into my own playing, because phrases were often a static chord under a moving melody, so visually you would see the chord and then use different notes that were available to create the chord solo phrase. This was a huge breakthrough and quickly gave me something that I could move over into my own playing. Let me show you how easy this is to work with and then I'll show you how it's also a game changer for your single note soloing. Let's take a 251 in G major, so A minor 7 to D7 to G major 7. Here's an A minor 7 chord to start with. And you can use these four notes as different melodies over that. For the D7, let's use this D7 altered. And then use these four notes for melody options. Now for the G major 7, then I think this is a really great sounding G major 7 with a 9. And you have these four notes over that chord. Now you have the chords next to each other and melodies that are close to each other as well, so turning that into a solo phrase is actually not that difficult. Or another variation like this one. And this is a lot easier to start with instead of being stuck with having to put different chords under each note in the melody that you want to improvise, which of course you can anyway start working on later, but it can also help you get another dimension into your single note lines as well. Before I moved to the Netherlands to study, I lived in Copenhagen and I was lucky to sometimes get to play with the musicians that were a lot further than I was. While jamming with a piano player, he gave me some advice that I unfortunately really couldn't put to use right away, but it later turned out to be very useful. When you're working on chord solos in the way that I just showed you for the 251 G major, then you can't really play the dense bebop lines that you usually do. But that limitation is actually really useful because you don't want to play dense lines all the time. You also want to play more sparse melodies with more emphasis on rhythm, the kind of phrases you hear Wes use quite often.
Technically, you can't really play harmonized bebop lines and chord solos, and therefore the lines or the melodies that you play are more simple, but you still make some solid chord solo lines, and that's actually helping you get into exactly those type of whiz melodies that I just talked about. That was also the observation that the piano player made when we were jamming. Your solos lack rhythm, but you actually play much more interesting stuff when you're playing chord solos. So you need to get that into your chord solos as well. Now at the time, I couldn't really implement that, but a few years later, that realization really helped me develop that type of phrasing in my playing because I was already used to hearing those phrases in my chord solos. And this is really just about taking a phrase like this one and then realize that it works without the chords as well. Let's look at another thing that working on this type of chord soloing really helps you develop. The biggest challenge when it comes to comping is to go from chord symbols to music, because a row of letters is of course not really music. And one of the strongest ways to get your chords to work together is melody. So if you can go further than just playing the chords like a robot and start to add some rhythm and some melody to how you play them, then you're really getting somewhere. You want to turn it into phrases, repeat motifs and make it a story. That would be something like this. But really, this is just playing lazy or sparse chord solo phrases. So approaching comping like this will give you material from your chord solos and also help you develop new chord solo material as you're comping the song. So if you're already working on chord solos, then try to take that approach when you're comping as well. Really just try to think in phrases, come up with small answers to whatever the soloist is playing, log in with the drummer and listen to what is going on around you in the band. You will sound a lot better. Another great sound that you can add to your playing that really works well with chord soloing is using pentatonic scales as chords. So check out this video because you can see how you can create some really beautiful chord runs and they are actually surprisingly easy to play. 